Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Lisa Eldridge Foundation. I'm super excited to test this out. This is actually kind of a first impression slash wear test because I just got it in the mail and I wanted to try it. Uh, I also picked up on her website, which is super helpful, some of these uh, foundation samples. So I'll do some swatches as well if you're trying to figure out your shade. But as always, I will have timestamps down below that will guide you through the review. So I'll be doing first impression, kind of application, swatches before and after how it looks in flash photo, how it looks throughout the day in natural light, you know the drill, and of course how it looks at the end of the day. If you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to subscribe, but let's go ahead and get started. So if you're not familiar with Lisa Eldridge, first of all, her voice is so soothing. Uh, I used to watch her YouTube videos a lot and uh, she just has an amazing voice, but she is described as an English New Zealand uh, makeup artist, so she kind of grew up in both locations. Maybe that's why her voice is just so perfect. It's it's just amazing, very soothing. She could do ASMR or read me to sleep anytime. But anyways, she's a makeup artist and she was actually first known when she was booked for Elle magazine to work on Cindy Crawford, which I didn't know. So I think that's super cool. I just did like a quick Google. Uh, but of course she is a makeup artist. She was the Lancome ambassador for a little while there. I'm not sure if she still is. Uh, worked on tons of different people. She has um, authored books and of course has her YouTube channel and uh, now her own makeup line, which I think is super, super cool. I ordered from her website, I'm in Canada, and good lord did I get hit with customs. It's been a little while, but what I will say, <laughs> I'll show you the box. It says Lisa Eldridge in there, which is pretty. Um, and then the way the things were packaged were nice. So I got the foundation, which comes in a beautiful box. I'll show you close-ups of everything. Then I got a gloss and a lipstick, which I really liked the way that they sort of wrapped these in the tissue paper. And then of course, with every foundation order, you get one free uh, foundation card, which I think is really helpful, or I'm not sure if it's every order or just an order of the foundation. But then I also purchased another card um, just to see in case I was really off in terms of my shade. So I picked up number 22. I think I should have went 21. Uh, it says on the website that number 22 is, uh, let me see. Number 22 is a medium foundation with neutral undertones. It looks kind of warm. But either way, this is the foundation. Really nice box. You could easily keep the box um, if you're into that kind of thing. This is what it looks like, very heavy packaging, like a little fancy egg. And this has a pump on there. And it comes, did I say it comes in 40 shades? It's 45 pounds. Either way, for this entire order, so 45 pound lips, uh, foundations. I got the lip gloss and the lipstick, and then two pounds for this. It came to 90 GBP which is 125 USD, which is probably closer to um, 140, 150 Canadian. So not cheap. The package came very quickly, but I got charged $45 in customs. So, I mean, I hope this foundation's good. <laughs> Let's swatch, why don't we? 17. 18? Mm. <laughs> God, I looked up reviews and I really thought I had it right with my shade. 19, oh that's very neutral. And 20. Interesting. You can see how much the undertone changes because like these, this one looks too dark for me, but like this is shades above and they look like better fits that are more neutral. It dries down darker. That's part of it. It dries down darker. Okay. 21. Hmm. That's probably the better match. 22 is what I bought. Yeah. 23. Very slight differences between the colors though, and I will say that I really appreciate that. And it looks to go really light to dark, and that one you can tell is very warm. That's 24. I'm gonna try and just use 21 on my face, I think. 22 is too dark and that drives me crazy <laughs> that I spent so much money on the wrong shade. I've got some breakouts so we'll be able to test coverage today. I'm going to use a sponge and it says it's intelligently formulated self-setting foundation blends effortlessly to smooth and unify skin with a natural looking soft skin focus. 
It's skin-friendly formula, gives customizable coverage that fuses seamlessly with your skin. Start with a little and blend to your de desired level of enhanced perfection. So, look at my ears, so red. Maybe this one is more peachy. I should look up and see what 21 is described as, because sometimes brand to brand it really um, can change. But this is a really good color match, and this looks very pretty. But I know I lost some of you with the customs cost and the exchange and all that kind of stuff, which is totally understandable. There's, I feel like if you're like a huge Lisa Eldridge fan, then maybe you'll be willing <laughs> to like take the hit. See, that's the, this is why I didn't get 21, is it says red undertones. When I hear red, I think red, you know, <laughs> not like, this is to me is like more peachy. But this is enough to definitely work that's in this little thing. And what I will say is it does seem kind of self-setting, like you kind of got to work, not that you need to work quickly with it, but a little bit, like it does seem to sort of self-set. It goes on creamy and then gives a more, I would say natural matte finish over like a natural satin. So yeah, there's still even a tiny, tiny bit left in this. So maybe if you're like interested, although I don't know what the customs would be like, but you can buy a lipstick and then get the card. So it definitely has a really nice finish. I'm still going to powder. I get to put on my concealer and everything like that. But I do like the finish. I think that it looks to be uh, a kind of a more matte finish, honestly, than a lot of the foundations I've been testing out lately, which is sort of surprising to me. But I guess it makes sense as well as a makeup artist. A lot of the time you're going to be dealing with um, photography, video, things like that. And then you add in your highlight and, and, and whatnot. But I do think it has a really beautiful look. So I'm going to go ahead and take some flash photos, put on the rest of my makeup, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back with the rest of my makeup on. Everything that I have on will be listed down below. I haven't done my lip yet because I figured we would try out the gloss and the lipstick together. Uh, but what I will say is that when I just had it on on its own, I was kind of like, mm, it looks a little bit makeup-y. And you'll see in my close-up, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to tell the difference on my skin. It may just be that it's a little bit more matte. What I will say is I definitely wouldn't build up the coverage any more than this. Um, so that little amount did work nicely. So your money will go uh, quickly with that because I feel like it would end up looking a little bit cakey, a little bit too makeup y, and it definitely on my skin right now looks a little bit more makeup y than what I'm used to lately, but I don't hate it because I feel like a lot of the time we're always like, no makeup, makeup, we don't want it to look like makeup, we don't want it to look like makeup, and I'm kind of like, I look like I have makeup on and it looks really cute. And I really like it. Uh, so I do I do like the finish. I guess I also haven't had on a more sort of on the matte side foundation recently too. So I do think it looks good, um, but uh, it's definitely it's definitely on the more makeup-y side, but still like a nice amount of coverage. And you can see uh, the pimples that I have here, they're a little bit red. They're not completely covered, but it did, it did an okay job. Uh, and as for flash photo, I thought it looked really beautiful here in my studio lighting. You can see um, with the more matte effect. And then in the flash photos, uh, I did feel like not necessarily there was flashback, but because less of my skin is showing through, through and there is less sheen uh, that it does look like there's a little something going on but it's very rare that I would ever take a photo in the absolute dark with just foundation on and flash that is a nightmare so <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, test out the two lip products this is what I've really heard the most about from her and I just I love the amount of care that was taken uh, to do this I, I do appreciate that so this is the lip gloss and I got this in the shade Go Lightly. I don't even know what the packaging looks like for these. I kind of forget. Oh, really cute. It's kind of a peachy with a little bit of gold in there. I do have the Too Faced Hangover Lip Balm on. That's what I'm always using when I film. Kind of a pointed doe foot-ish. No scent. This is the kind of gloss color that I love to put over a nude lipstick to warm it up a little. Um, or I can wear it on its own. It has a lot of pigment, actually. The, I can't, there's shimmer in it, but I can't feel it. Nice texture, not too sticky, but a little bit sticky, which I like because I feel like it helps last longer. And that's a really nice sort of everyday color. 
And then for lipstick, I picked up the shade Velvet Dragon. Now these, this is what I've heard the most about from Lisa Eldridge, uh, are these uh, True Velvet Lip Colors. And these are very luxe looking, very gorgeous weighted gold, sort of brush gold packaging. Have her logo there on the top, which is a really beautiful like L with the lips. Oh, <gasps> literally, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going to be able to show you this. How do they do it? I mean, I'm sure you've seen this on Instagram, but is this even being captured? Let me, let me turn on the brightness. <sighs> Can you see that it's like textured? Holy guacamole. Wow, that's satisfying. <laughs> I love makeup. That is just something. Okay, let's put it on. <laughs> Beautiful, full of color. Kind of a bricky red orange. Oof. I might need to order again just for the, oh. You might think I'm being dramatic, but I love makeup. That's why I'm here. Okay. <laughs> Anywho. So far, I think it looks really good. The shade match looks good. And I feel like even with the potential of it drying down darker, the shade uh, is a much better match for me than the one that I actually purchased, which hurts a little bit. But I'm do I am really glad that I do have those cards here so that I could test it out. And it's nice to know that that one little um, bit of product covers an entire face if you do just want to test it out on those cards. So really beautiful look and finish so far. I will say it doesn't feel the absolute lightest on my skin, um, but it does look uh, quite good, I think. So I will check back with you uh, in a couple of hours. Hello, coming to you with my midday check-in, looking slightly disheveled. First of all, I decided to leave this lipstick on just to see like the wear time. It's not said to be like a super long wearing lipstick, but I had a bagel and whole breakfast set up. I had my crispy brownie cookies from Whole Foods, dipped them in a latte, it was delightful. I'm losing some product up here. Partially it was my fault because I went to clean up some makeup. If you saw in the beginning of the video, it was there. But then I was lying on the couch so I got a bunch of work done this morning and then I was taking a little break to watch Housewives of Salt Lake City. What a mess. Um, and I had my like Dyson heater on and I think it was making my one eye water. So you can see that that area got a little bit worse. And then I'm not sure if you can tell, but it looks, mm, honestly it looks better on camera, but it looks kind of makeup-y on the skin. And I know I keep saying like that it looks like makeup, but if you know, you know. <laughs> um, and the other thing that I wanted to mention was when I first had it on, I really wanted to just go in with a setting spray just to sort of take that look down a bit, that make it be look and sort of help it meld into my skin. I think that would have helped a lot. But otherwise, I do think that it looks good. I thought the video that I filmed after, I just filmed an empties video, that looked good. It looked really good on Instagram stories and things like that. It does give this kind of perfected look. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and wear this for a few more hours, going to do some editing and things like that, and I will check back with you this evening. Hello, it is the end of the day. I'm getting ready to go do a big old walk, and I, I don't know if I'm going to fully wash my face, but I just I want to remove some of my makeup. I will say I kind of like it a little bit more now that my oils have started to push through. I think it's stayed in place pretty nicely. You can see I still have that line from the lipstick. I really, really, really love the lipstick. It was definitely a win for me. I felt felt really, really comfortable. Normally I wouldn't wear like a bright red like that and eat a bagel and things. So not a big issue. I removed the rest of it. I do think it looks nice. It's kind of probably a foundation that I would mix in with a liquid bronzer, like the one from Indeed Labs or Drunk Elephant, or like a liquid illuminator, definitely a setting spray. And I didn't, I used the um, Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish because I didn't want to put that much powder on it because when I initially put it on, it looked quite matte. So I'm going to do just a little blotting and powdering to see how it looks. Uh, and I'm definitely glad that I used 21 over shade 22 because this is a, a good shade match for me might have actually darkened up today because I did use a self tanning body lotion and that normally kind of goes up today. So it definitely looks good after blotting. I'm a bit confused about this foundation, honestly. 
I think the thing that makes me less confused is the fact that it's hard to get plus the price tag makes me makes the decision a little bit easier about how I feel. Uh, should I put on the gloss? Should I put on the gloss? So yeah, minus this fact where like I had some eye watering and stuff, I do think it looks. Hi, Roo Poo. Roo. A lot of you are asking where she is in videos, and normally I film first thing in the morning, and that's when she goes back to bed. But she just woke up from her big daily nap. Her kid. What do you think? I'll never be as beautiful as you. And she's old girl too. She's about 14 now. So she just sleeps more. Has a little less to say in her old age. But I will say, if you're a big Lisa Eldridge fan, check it out. If you live in Canada, I would probably think twice about getting it just because the price tag with conversion or exchange plus the customs, it's a lot. If you don't get your shade right, you know? But I do think like at the end of the day, it does look really nice. It looks really beautiful in um, pictures and stuff, but would I repurchase? Because the thing is for me, like this is part of my job. So like, it, the, not that the, like, there's no price limit, but I do end up spending way more money on makeup and I'm thinking like, would I go buy this? Would I buy this again? There's just so many great foundations out there. So, okay, here's the thing. I am con potentially considering buying it, getting another lipstick uh, in the shade that is for me. But if I was just like a regular makeup user, I don't think I would repurchase it because there are other options out there. But it is a good medium coverage uh, foundation that has a more nat natural, natural, nat natural matte finish. If you have really, really oily skin, I do think it held up well, um, but I wouldn't say it's going to be the best out there for um, oily skin. Maybe a Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin might be a better option for you. Uh, if you have normal combo skin, I think it would look really good. I'm not sure on dry. Dry, you might want to put a nice moisturizing primer under there perhaps, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts. I'm a little bit on the fence about it. Uh, and because I'm on the fence, that makes me think it's a bit of a no just because the price tag is up there, but I do kind of like it. It does look good. But so for example, I think about like my Pat McGrath. I have a great shade match in that. I love the way it looks on my skin. I love the way that lasts. That's a $90 foundation Canadian. Tom Ford is 110. I really like that one too. So really depends. Obviously there's great options at the drugstore. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Those are my thoughts. I hope this is helpful um, for, for you uh, in terms of making your decision. Of course, you have the uh, end power on what you want to spend your money on. But yeah, those lipsticks are gorgeous. So thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Samantha Jane YT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!